So what does Escalon mean? Where, what is the uh, name? How did it originate? <laughs> Actually, Escalon is Portuguese for stairs or going up, but it's actually the town where my great grandma is from, and that's pretty much where it came from. Yeah. It's the first time we've ever heard that before. <laughs> What were you telling people your band name meant? I always I, to him. Going higher, yeah, but I never knew about his grandma. So. <laughs> well, now it has special meaning. <laughs> so what are your thoughts about the show tonight? All local show here at Ace. It's just another local show, you know. I mean, there's some pretty cool bands that are on here, like Journal, that just got done playing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Citadel. Citadel, yeah, they're pretty sick bands. And it's just one of those shows that we have to do. You know, being a local band and everything. I think we're going to have a good time tonight and put on a good show for everyone. Awesome. So I heard that you guys have a new single coming out. We just released our single, The Absence of Darkness, but we have a new single coming out sometime next month. It was called Body Count. Mm -hmm. It's one of our newest songs that we finished writing. Uh, it's looking pretty cool, pretty metal song. You know. Can you give us a little sample of what it's about, lyrical-wise? Um, lyrical-wise, it's talking about how... The government has been controlling everything behind the shadows. Like you might think that Barack's in charge or whichever is in charge, but really there's someone else behind. That's what the song's mostly about. And all the FEMA, you know, martial law thing that they talk about a lot lately. And how, uh, mostly the song's about how we think that it's time for that shit to stop and it's time for it to give back to the people. Well, I do agree with you. So if you could make anything right now in the world that's currently illegal, legal, what would it be? Marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else have a law that they personally would like to make legal? Uh, the whole, uh, your ID being expired and you can't drink. Oh I, I, I'm 26. I'm 26 and I can't go to a bar and drink. I'm like, my birthday didn't expire. This little freaking car. And you know it's $26 to replace that shit? It's kind of ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. All right, so let's talk about dogs or human, cats or dogs, and people or monsters too. That is our full-length album that we're trying to release as soon as possible. It's looking sometime near the end of the year. We don't have an exact date yet. Mm -hmm. It really depends on when we get all the money together to release it but we have all the songs done and ready to go it's just paying for all the mixing and mastering and everything to finally have that album done and we are already in the process of working on our second album and working on tour and everything it's right now our main focus has been our first album and finishing everything out okay and uh, I heard that you're working with a pretty heavy hitter on this new one that's coming out so what's how how'd that happen well Ryan used to work with this, this guy, guy. This guy. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> Used to work with this guy named Jack White Jerry. and Jerry White. Okay. Sorry, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get it right. I gotta get it right. You gotta do it for him. And uh, his friend Sam Bostig, who's uh, in charge and also the owner of House of Soul Records, has been uh, recording us. He's been doing some mixing and mastering. He mixed and mastered Absence of Darkness. And we're working on some other songs with him right now. We're trying to release our entire album with him. He's had. Uh, huge, huge people in the R&B and rap industry. Oh, like yeah. he's had E40, Too Short, Tupac even that have came through and recorded with him. That's awesome. And he came to us asking us to come and record with him. So we kind of feel a little special. He wanted he wanted to get into the heavier music and mm -hmm. try it out on somebody. So we decided to go ahead and do it. And that's happening here in Sacramento. No, it's in no. Vallejo. In Vallejo. In Vallejo. Okay. okay. That's freaking rad. That's, that's really cool. So how many songs? New stuff, old stuff? Um, all of our old songs we re-recorded mm -hmm. and we have, I think it's four or five new songs that we're going to release on the album. And you already have stuff for a second one? Yeah, we already have two songs. Wow. Uh, one that kind of has like a southern kind of feel for it and then one of them that's more metal but it kind of has a poppier kind of mm -hmm. attitude to it. Those are the two songs we've written for our second album, so we're probably going to release them as singles, but mm -hmm. as of right now, we have them in our minds as second album material. Okay, so what are some of the influences behind your songs? What do you guys think, guys? Influences? Anyone? 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 Anyone
This guy is the lead songwriter, so. I guess the influences for most of our songs are basically like my life experience and how I observe everything and what I feel is the truth and what I feel people should know. And like musically, the guitar influences are like all around the map. It's like stuff like Silverstein, Oceano, uh, even local bands have influenced me a lot. Yeah, everybody okay. listens to different kinds of music. Uh, nice. Yeah. Cool. We all listen to like metal. Uh, I know. Uh, I know. I know. He listens. Jack likes to play, or Matt, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> he likes to listen to a lot of rap. You know, Joe listens to a lot of Norma Jean, Meshuggah, and uh, you know, Carl listens to like dubstep and metal and reggae. What? Yeah. Mikey, Mikey likes silver scene and stuff. I listen to just about everything, you know, ska to heavy metal to classic rock. And then the metal guy right here. <laughs> You're one of those. All right, so what are some of the plans for uh, this year? Are you guys going on tour? I heard talk of Warped Tour. So what, what do you guys got in the, the plans? Yeah, we've been working really hard with the, the guys from the warped.battlethebands.com guys for mm -hmm. to get on Warped Tour. And right now we're sitting in 15th place if I'm not, I'm pretty sure we're around 15th or 16th place for all of everyone for San Francisco. So that's everyone in Northern California and a lot of the people from Southern California. In Oregon. And there's some guys from Oregon that are deciding to try. And we're in 15th place out of almost 2,000 and some odd bands. I think it's like 2,300. So we're doing pretty good. It's just we really have to be there all day long because most of those bands are sitting there all day long with no lives. I mean, <laughs> I have shit to Chase do does. all day long. Chase plays I, Call of Duty and gets on Warped Tour. Right. Nice, <laughs> nice. I play video games. All right, fuck it. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so what does declaring war on generic core mean? Oh, <laughs> that's for Mikey. That's a Mikey yeah. question. I mean, besides awesomely rhyming. <laughs> um, it's basically a lot of Sacramento bands sound the same, and something we try to do is make sure we don't sound like everyone else. Okay. And that's the thing. basically what it means. Okay, sounds good. So to talk a little bit about the local scene and your experiences and opinions, because you guys have been around since 2010. Okay, what are some of the worst and best things about the Sacramento local music scene? Main thing that I would say is the worst part about You're the Sacramento already, music right? scene is because I believe that most of the bands are all following the same path. Like all of them are all doing the exact same thing. They're all going to the same guy to record. They're all playing the same exact music. Like it just seems like everything's the same to me and it's really hard for the Sacramento music scene to you know go forth and grow uh -huh. if everything's the same like we need individuality and like personalities uh -huh. to make this better and that's one of the things that we like bringing with Escalon like dude one of our songs will be about this and something else will be about something else like we'll have a punk song and then we'll have a metal song we'll have a pop song and then we have a rock song it, it we just decide that hey I don't care we're gonna do whatever we want that's fucking awesome dude all right, well, we'll keep doing that. This yeah. right here, it hits me in the heart. Because I remember, I've been in the scene for at least 10 or 11 years. So I've seen when uh, people used to go to shows back to now where hardly anybody goes to shows. And to me, I feel like it's it, too many promoters are trying to put on too many shows. And also the fact that people just, they just aren't in it for their supporting their own scene anymore. I don't, I don't know where that would happen with that, so... Uh, it's saddening, saddening to see bands, bands like uh, an old band like Supermodel Suicide, who would pack the boardwalk, a local band, completely full, and now that's pulling teeth to try to do that. Even when when well, bands like us, we'll maybe for a couple days, we'll we'll take three or four dollars off the ticket price, yeah. just to see if we can sell tickets. And people still are just kind of like, yeah, I, I don't know. That three or four bucks comes out of my pocket. <laughs> just to let you guys Not yours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I've seen you guys several times, and I know that you guys have pretty much, you know, made your mark in Sacramento. So keep fighting the good fight and keep making the music that, you know, fucking means something to you. Because your fans recognize that. So I want to thank you all so much for taking the time to meet with Capital Chaos. And we will see you on stage soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have a good day. Thanks for everything. Check you later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah.